Hi everyone and welcome again to Adventures in Parenting, 30 Days to Becoming a Better Parent. My guest, as you can tell from next to me here, she's not a parent. <laughs> um, but I'm going to introduce my special guest today in just a second. And um, I want to once again welcome everybody to day 13. This will be day 13. Um, we have talked about so many things over the last 12 days and had a fun interview yesterday, so I hope you enjoyed our interview yesterday. Uh, Marty still swears we stole the soul, so whatever. Um, and we're going to talk to my uh, lovely guest here who took time out of her busy day to be with us today. Uh, I think you're going to be surprised with some of the information that you hear from her. And I'm, uh, I'm Julie Flaherty, for those of you who don't know, the crazy lady who does these every day. And um, what is your name, my friend? I'm Janice Martin. Janice Martin. And how do you know me? I'm your daughter. That's <laughs> true. It is true. We are about full disclosure here. This is my oldest daughter, Janice, and she is with us today because she's an expert herself. I know she seems young, but she is truly an expert in um, working and dealing with special needs kids. And it may not seem like it, but since she's not only grown up with special needs kids, she has a special interest in that, and what would that be? I want to uh, help them someday. I want to um, be a special needs instructor and teacher. I want to be able to go to schools and help them out and um, really uh, make a difference in their life. So. Kind of cool, right? And you've got some experience doing that, right? Yeah, in, my, uh, in school, I would go and help them. I would um, help them learn different math skills and social skills and um, reading skills. That way they can, um, out of high school, they can get jobs and be just as successful as anybody else in the world. Okay. Pretty cool, right? I, don't you wish you were driven like that? I know. I wish I was when I was younger. Wasn't at all. Remember? Loophole finder, gifted person. Yeah. Mm, had no goals like that. Um, so it's kind of cool that she's got that. Now, um, personally, you deal with uh, special needs how? What, what personally, how, uh, what do you have in your life that is a special needs situation? Uh, my whole family. <laughs> my <laughs> yeah, whole family included on that. <laughs> <laughs> Different um, disabilities and um, a disability can be a reading disability, yeah. it can be a social disability, it can be anything. And um, any it just um, contributes to us being different. It's true, it's true. And that's kind of cool that um, in in your personal life, you see that differences are a cool thing. Yeah. Um, from the geekiest geek to the smartest um, cool kid to uh, uh, cheerleaders to, um, and full disclosure on that, she was a cheerleader too. Um, <laughs> she was one of the cool cheerleaders. <laughs> um, and then professionally, do you work with some special needs people? There's a couple special needs people um, at the place I work, mm -hmm. and um, it's just a different way and communicating in a different way. They do different jobs and, you know, they do things that, you know, the rest of us don't want to do. <laughs> so, like cleaning bathrooms and stuff like that. But they do it and they have a smile on their face because they have a job and they have a disability and a lot of kids and a lot of people out there have disabilities and don't have jobs. True. Well, there are a lot of people without disabilities that don't have jobs. and. Um, it's really cool to go in and see the people that are, uh, we would consider special needs, that are um, singing because they're happy at their job or they're having fun in a way that I know I wouldn't enjoy at all. So it's really cool the gratefulness that, that you see and they're grateful for smiles and, and jokes and laughter and high fives and, and it really makes your day a little better. Yeah, it's like the other day we were driving down the street and a special needs kid was waving at all the cars that were going by and it makes your day, it really does. It really does and we know he was a special needs student. <laughs> he um, had uh, the affects of Down syndrome so we weren't judging so don't send me an email that says I'm judgmental. <laughs> that wasn't it. He was truly a special needs mm -hmm. and he was just waving to everyone and saying hi and it was really cool. It totally made our day when we were out. So. Um, I think we giggled about that all day long, and here we are talking about it again today. Um, I wanted to ask you, with your experience with special needs at home, how does that affect how you talk to every everybody else, or how do you treat everybody else? 
I think it's an even playing field because um, it's just they're people just like you and I are. Mm -hmm. They're, um, I mean, they, they have feelings, they have um, emotions, they have things that they love to do, they have things that they're good at, and I think that's what makes it um, special is that, um, you know, they're just the same as everybody else. They just have a little something um, different that's uh, blocking their way from being successful in life, and uh, a lot of them are successful, mm -hmm. and that's what I think is really remarkable about them. That is kind of cool. Um, to, to think about this for everybody out there, um, Janice grew up with uh, a brother who has social issues and um, went through a tough time in school. Now that happened to be a same school she went to. Um, how did that affect you? Um, I mean, I, I kind of did my own thing and had my own group of friends, but it was, it was hard to see that, you know, he was having troubles and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time, I knew that he was different than I was, but, you know, I wasn't exactly, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how I could make it better. But, you know, it is, it is upsetting seeing that somebody, you know, is having troubles making friends or, you know, whatever. And in school and that I that I didn't or that I, there was nothing I could do to change it. Did you ever um, did you ever feel the need for and and keep in mind I talked about a social injustice and how um, gifted kids stand up for social injustice so there's our caveat for the day but um, and so I kind of know the answer to this but it was there ever a time where you saw something that you thought was was wrong and you stood up for that, whether that's in part of uh, working with your special needs friends or students at school or personally? Um, at school, there's all sorts of people that look at, you know, people with special needs and say, oh, well, they're just stupid or, oh, well, you know, they don't really know that I'm talking about them. And then you turn around and you go back to class and these kids are crying and upset because they say, you know, well, why were they making fun of me? How am I any different than, than them? How am I any smarter or, you know, anything? And so it, it, it's difficult to watch them figure it out for themselves that, um, you know, they are different, but they're not. Yeah. And that some people just don't accept them. So. Was there ever situations where you were um, helping them with lunch or out to lunch? They would take a lot of field trips to get the kids acclimated to the social uh, network of the world. Um, was there any time where you had to step up and step in and um, maybe not necessarily accommodate or compensate for someone, but um, be that safety net that I've talked about before uh, for somebody and really kind of help facilitate or guide them through a social or a, a, a situation that would have been difficult for them to handle on their own? Oh uh, yeah, we've had times at, you know, Walmart, we take them to Walmart and they have a shopping list and they didn't have enough money to get everything that they wanted. And, um, you know, by themselves, I think they would have probably, some of them, hit the cashiers or hit the people and you can't do that in an environment and not get kicked out of the store, you know, anybody else. And so, you know, there was times that we had to talk through it and say, okay, pick the thing that you want the absolute most and the rest of it we'll put away or... You know, and you have to you have to approach it in a patient, calm way, or it's just going to get them even more mad than you know what what they were before. Okay, so it's tackling social situations and teaching them because they're not angry, hurtful people. Um, they that's they not what they understand. want, but they weren't sure how to handle that frustration when it happened. So it, to talk them through frustration, uh, how difficult is that in the heat of the moment? It's difficult, especially when they they keep saying, "Well, I don't, I but I there's I want everything, you know. <laughs> I want I want it all. I want the whole store. My mom <laughs> never lets me do that, you know. Whatever it, you know, it is difficult, and you have to keep patience and you have to be calm because if you're not, then they're not going to be. So dealing with giftedness and special needs and autism and uh, Downs or whatever label they may or may not have had sometimes is similar to dealing with say um, a frustrated toddler a frustrated toddler a frustrated a, teenager a frustrated um, uh, older person sometimes almost have. like an uh, Alzheimer's yeah. is that 
um, mm -hmm. because they want to do the right thing, but their brain isn't taking it all in at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, is there any message you want to get out there in the next minute or so? No pressure. <laughs> uh, well, time though, right? Uh, uh, any message you want to get out to people um, who may watch this that uh, about special needs or about um, if they see somebody that seems different or acts different, um, what, what should they maybe stop and think about before they react? I think what you sh people should stop and think is um, they're people, just like you know you and I are, and they they have goals in life, and they have extraordinary talents, and you know these people they want to they want to live on their own, and they want you know their parents to be proud of them, just like you know your you want your parents or your kids your kids want you know you as a parent to be proud of them, and they you know, they love. Um, happy faces they love to be smiley and happy and um, they're just happy people that um, want to be accepted in society and we've talked about that that that's really the goal for everyone is just to be like everybody else that's whether your special needs are gifted or or whatever normal is I don't know what normal <laughs> is we have a saying around here normal is setting on a dryer so that's about as normal as we get but um, well, I certainly appreciate you taking the time today. She is a busy girl. She's <laughs> always got something going on, and she makes yummy treats at that. So, hey, bonus for me. Um, I, like I tell people, you don't get a body like this by working out, right? Um, anyway, well, I thank everybody for coming by today and checking us out. Share us with your friends. You never know who uh, you may meet next in the old Camp Flaherty clan, and um, I appreciate her coming by. She was a much more willing accomplished today than her father was yesterday. <laughs> so um, I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow on day 14 and I may be a little sore, you never know, I'm running a marathon tomorrow. Uh, well, yeah, it's going to be tough. So <laughs> I'll explain it later. There'll be a, a little video and a lot of pain and aspirin. So anyway, I will talk to everybody later. Thanks Janice and um, see you tomorrow. Bye.